What is up, guys? It's Noah here, and welcome to my quick explanation of what perk decks are and how they work. If you were as confused as I was, having accidentally skipped out Bane's explanation, that explanation will be up on screen any minute now, so if I'm still confusing you, try reading what he has to say. He says it quite concisely, but there's still a couple of bits missed out and that aren't fully understood. So, as you can see, the skill trees have been changed thanks to update 39, an excellent update that have, uh, has really gone a long way to balance some of the issues with the skill trees. Uh, as long as uh, they don't break the game again, this has to be one of my favorite updates ever. Um, but you'll notice all our tier bonuses are gone. Tiers still exist because we need the tiers um, so we can cap ourselves off from getting some of the better perks easily, but there are no longer any bonuses, which makes me sad because I used to have excellent bonuses and it made me so strong. Well. You're going to be weaker for a little while, but once you can accrue some experience, you can start specking into a perk deck. And uh, I sort of see this as a uh, an after game idea. So once you hit level 100, whether you choose to go infamous or not, you're working up experience that's going nowhere. Well, now your experience can actually sink somewhere else. The way it converts is 1,000 experience points in the game equal one perk point. So it's quite a hefty conversion rate for you. Um, I'm going to work my way through the, the perks and explain exactly what the cost of each is. So as you can see, I'm working through the muscle tree right now, and I'll go into more detail about the perks that I'm a huge fan of and that seem very unique a little later, but for now, just to quickly walk you through costs and values. So brute strength cost me 200, then 300 from helmet popping, 400 meat shield, 600 blending in, uh, 1000 for giant strength, and it's going to be 1600 for walks in closet. It actually ranges all the way up to 4,000 for 800 pound gorilla, and that's the same for every single one of these decks. Um, and in total, it's gonna be well over 10 million uh, experience points. So prepare to do a fair bit of heisting for this, but it's definitely worth it. There are some really unique skills that we've never seen before that have actually been snuck into these perk decks. But just to quickly show you how the experience works. So after my heist, I will convert the uh, experience in the heist into perk decks. Those perk decks can then be leveled up. As you can see, the progress of 37 out of 200 on my crew chief over here. I can take that away or I can add it. Once, as you can see in armor over here, once I have fully obtained the perk, so I've put my 200 perk points into it, I will have this and there will be no way for me to get rid of it. However, I don't have to equip it, so I can choose to equip armor and I'll have 5% more armor, but this seems silly seeing as how I'm much further up the muscle tree, so I'm much more likely to equip that. So essentially, this is 200 wasted points while I'm not using it, but eventually I'm going to have to unlock it, and so for the purpose of science, it was probably worth me picking up. But as you can see, I'm also not likely to want to use crew chief right now. I'm working my way through muscle, so I can take the points out of that and drop it easily into walk-in closet. Now, first of all, let's take a look at the skills that are shared. So we have Brute Strength shared by Crew Chief and Muscle. That just sort of makes sense for both their play styles. Want to be tanky and supporty. Then we have Helmet Popping. This is shared by each and every one of these perk decks. And one of the most powerful skills just inherently in the game. Headshot damage increased by 25%. Boom, easy. You want to pick that up as soon as possible, no matter which perk deck you choose to go down. Then you start getting some really cool, unique perks. I'm just going to talk about Muscle, seeing as how that's the one that I've thought about the most and have chosen to go down right now with my sort of hybrid enforcer technician build that I run. Meat Shield means you are 15% more likely to be targeted when you are close to your crew members. You also gain more health to make you more of the tank um, that you want to be. So this seems like a sort of MMO skill. It, it, it's like a... a a taunt and if you're to couple this with your teammates picking up elusive they are 15% less likely to be targeted you basically become the taunting tank there's a 30% tar uh, chance to be targeted range between the two of you and you're basically going to be taking all the shots so you can get into cover and tank all those shots up or you can just move out with your iron curtain style build and take those shots to the face so Meat Shield is really cool, and it's something that we've never seen before and will allow some more dynamic events within the heist, I imagine. You, you can designate your tank, essentially. 
and that's why I chose to go around this down this tree. Then you've got blending in, uh, the, the concealment isn't really important. What is important to me is this 45% more experience when you complete days and jobs. This is quite a cool perk idea because I know we already had these experience perks, but this is sort of inherent once you've picked it up, you'll have it forever. It's in all the skill trees as I said, but this is not only going to speed up the process of you getting your uh, more perk decks, so it's important for that reason. Also, if you're leveling, so for you new guys who've just bought the game while well, it was on a very, very cheap sale, this is going to really help you to level up. So, I think it's going to cut down on a lot of the early game monotony, so I'm a huge fan of that perk as well. Then we have Giant Strength. 30% more health is nothing to scoff at, but then again, neither is the 1,000 perk points it costs. Moving on up, we have another skill that is shared by all the perk decks, Walk in Closet. Now, this is one of the coolest perks we've seen in a very long time. Um, what's amazing about this is the fact that it allows some builds that were otherwise basically not viable. So I can now happily run an Enforcer Ghost. Um, so I can I can set up my mission with my Ghost with the uh, all the the skill points that keep my concealment low and go in wearing my suit. So I can, for example, in Big Bank, basically get myself to the vault, but I, I don't want to try and sneak it out. It's not really viable, um, and we're all out of body bags, and I know I'm going to get caught. I can quickly swap them out to my Enforcer gear, where I have shotgun skills and I'm ready to fight, put on my heaviest armor, and then go loud. I've already, I'm already halfway through the mission, thanks to my ghost skills, and I'm easily going to breeze through the drill section, thanks to my enforcer skills, and walk in closet is going to allow this. Not to mention, this also allows 135% ammo pickup rate, also a really, really good perk. So this is definitely a perk to look out for, and as I've said, it's in each and every one of the skill trees. Another unique skill, Disturbing the Peace, you can now use light machine guns, submachine guns, and sniper rifles to spread panic among your enemies. Panic will make enemies go into short bursts of uncontrollable fear. I haven't seen this in work yet, obviously, because I haven't picked it up, but I don't know whether this means you're going to have friendly fire amongst the police, whether they're just going to run away and make the assault wave a complete shambles. It's a really cool skill. What surprises me, and I think I know the reason behind this, is why they chose submachine guns over shotguns. Basically, submachine guns didn't have enough and shotguns were too powerful. It doesn't really make sense that submachine guns are all that frightening when you're putting them up to, next to light machine guns and snipers, but um, it's a little bit of in-game balancing, I imagine. Then we've got another perks shared by all Fast and Furious. I think why they wanted to share this was the Dr. Bag uh, interaction speed, but overall this seems like one of the most useless skills, especially seeing as how far up in the perk deck it is. But this is just par for the course for you to reach your last skill, and there are some awesome last skills. A 800 pound gorilla, for example, that's another 40% health. You have basically become a tank with this muscle perk deck. Or you can choose to go down Rogue, which is probably the second most interesting perk deck in my opinion, and pick up Killer Instinct, or your weapons have a 25% chance to pierce enemy armor. You'll recognize that sort of idea from the Ghost Tree tier bonuses but also the time between swapping weapons is reduced by 80%. You'll notice all of these have the end tier ghost skill of the uh, what used to be Lucky Charm and then became a tier bonus, and that's a 10% chance of getting better loot in Payday. And so what, what's cool about this is it's properly rewarding you for basically being finished. Once you hit the end of this perk deck, you have accrued so much experience you're probably max rank already, and uh, you've certainly put your hours in. So I think they are right to give you that deck completion bonus. But guys, go out there and check out these perk decks. Do your best. I know the grinding is going to take some time. It's taking me long enough to get up to walking closet. But I'm going to work my way up to the top perk deck. And then finally, I can start making some brand new builds with little bits of perk decks mixed in. This is going to allow you to specialize much more, and uh, to be honest, tier bonuses, as helpful as they were, they were just a little bit clumsy and often slightly unrelated. They've certainly cut down the skill trees, they've refined them, they've made a lot of underpowered things more powerful. I think ECM Feedback might be the new MVP in Deathwish. Sentry Guns are amazing, if you, any of you are subscribed, I imagine quite a lot of you 
will be subscribed to General Mutt Badass. He uploaded a Sentry Tower Defense video. Check that out. It's really fun to watch. And I've always been a big advocate of Sentry Guns. And now they've buffed them. So, uh... Be sure to check out some things in the future concerning those, maybe some montages with my beloved sentry guns. But as I said, guys, stick around, get out there, and do your perk decks justice. I'll see you all in the next one.